Hey everybody, Jason here. Welcome to my Knot channel. In this video, we're gonna have a look at how to tie an easy two color paracord bracelet. All right, let's head on into the work table and take a look. To make this two color paracord bracelet, you'll need two different colors of paracord, an appropriate clasp, a lighter, and a pair of scissors. I'm adding a link in the description of where you can find these supplies. There are a few different types and sizes of clasp, and really any will do, but I find a medium-sized paracord bracelet clasp to work best, and that's what I'll use for this project. For this style of paracord bracelet, I found that approximately eight feet of cord works well, but you may need more if you have a wider wrist. Because we're going to use two colors, begin by cutting each piece of paracord to roughly four feet in length. That's about 125 centimeters for those you... With the cords cut to length, you should melt the ends so the core strands don't run out or fray. I like to squish my ends flat for this project because it'll help slide the end through the clasp later on. We can now join our two cords by melting the ends with our lighter and then pressing them together. Be careful, melted paracord is hot, so give it a moment to cool before you touch it. It'll only take a few seconds to cool down. Your joined cords will now look something like this. By the way, of course you can use any combination of colors. I'm using orange and green so that there's a strong contrast and you'll be able to see what I'm doing easy. With the paracord joined and cooled, you can now pass it through one side of your clasp. I'm able to fit the joined end through, but this might be a tight squeeze for you. If it is, you can easily use the open ends of your paracord instead. Once you have your cordage through the clasp, you'll tie the easy lark's head knot to hold it in place, as shown here. When setting this up, the main thing is you want to end up with your melted joint at the bottom side of your clasp when finished. Your project should look something like this so far, with the melted part at the bottom of the clasp. Now we're going to pass both of our free ends of paracord through the other side of the clasp. This is when the squished flat ends come in handy, as it makes passing the ends through very easy. You want to be sure to pass through from the top of the clasp, with the paracord coming out the bottom. Before you go any further, just check quickly that your cords didn't cross, and then pass your hand through the loop to get the right fit. Cinch up the paracord so it's comfortably snug, and then release the clasp while being careful to maintain the proper length of bracelet. For this video, I'll be using a bracelet jig that I'll keep my hands out of the way and enable you to see clearly what I'm doing. You definitely don't need one of these jigs, and the bracelet can easily be tied freehand. But if you'd like one, I'll also have a link where you can find one in the description. If you're using a jig, be sure to adjust it for the proper fit. Now let's start weaving this easy two-color paracord bracelet. I'm going to start on the left side and cross the green cord over both core strands. Then I pass the orange cord over the green, then under both core strands, and then up through the loop on the left side. and then pull on both cords to cinch up the knot. From there, I'm gonna repeat the weave pattern, this time starting with the right cord, passing over both center core strands, then passing the left over the green, followed by passing it under both center strands and up through the loop on the right side as shown. This decorative knot pattern is known as the cobra weave, and we're going to continue to follow the pattern down the length of the bracelet. Left side crosses over center strands, right crosses over top, then goes underneath the center to come out the loop on the left side. Then right side crosses over center strands, left crosses on top, then goes underneath the center to come out the loop on the right side. I'm gonna speed up the process, but keep watching to see the best way to finish off the bracelet. I should also mention that as you can see, our core is created with the green paracord and the orange creates the loops on the sides. You can change the orientation of your colors very easy. Just remember, whichever color you start your weave with will be the center color. So when I started this bracelet, I started on the left side, which was green, and now the green is on the center. And if I wanted an orange center, then I would have started on the right-hand side and with the orange paracord. 
The cobra weave is also known as the Solomon weave, or Solomon knot, and it can be used in a variety of different decorative knotwork. If you're new to paracord crafts and decorative knots, then I highly recommend my video, 10 Paracord Knots Everyone Should Know. That video provides details on how to tie the 10 most common and useful decorative knots. I'll provide a link in the description and also at the end of this video. One interesting thing about learning to tie knots is that it's an ancient skill. Did you know that decorative knot work like this is the oldest form of folk art? It's true, and there have been archaeological discoveries dating back thousands of years. I think that's pretty cool. As you tie your paracord bracelet, be sure to pull each pass of paracord nice and snug. You don't want it to be too tight, or the bracelet will be very stiff, but cinch up each weave equally tight and try not to leave too much gap in the weave. As we near the end, the bracelet is really starting to take shape. We're close to finishing it off. When you get near the end, you'll want to trim your paracord and melt the ends. It's okay to trim the end on top of the bracelet and you'll end up with a melted end that's similar to this example, but there's a tidier way. The alternative is to simply pass your top cord back through to the other side by loosening your last knot and then passing your top cord through the space created. Be sure to cinch this adjustment nice and snug. It might take a bit of fiddling with the cords, but you can get it just right with a bit of wiggling and tightening. I'm now going to remove the bracelet from the jig and show you what we have so far. As you can see, the bracelet is almost finished. Let's trim away these tail ends. To trim the ends, I'm gonna use my scissors and cut the paracord a few millimeters away from the bracelet. I want to ensure that there's enough cordage to melt easily without risking burning the back of my bracelet. Also, I want enough melted paracord to fuse together with both strands to help hold it in place. With my ends cut, I'll now use my lighter to melt the ends carefully. When I have a good melt on both ends, I use my scissors to squish the ends flat against the back and also together as shown. You can see that I now have all my melted ends together at one end and also at the bottom side of the bracelet where nobody can see. Last thing to do is to try it on and see if it fits. Okay, so there you have it. An easy two color paracord bracelet. Now, as promised, here's a link to my video, 10 paracord knots that every paracordist should know. I hope you check it out. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. All right, thanks for watching.